Hey beauty lovers and fellow entrepreneurs, I'm Yegi, the owner and founder of Yegi Beauty. Within five years of being my own boss, I was able to grow Yegi Beauty into a multi-million dollar company. This podcast is where I share what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur in the beauty industry. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Today's episode is going to be all about building clientele and the things you may be doing to get in your own way. Number one mistake that we make with our clients is when we don't take the time to get to know them and build our relationship with them. Sometimes we feel like we need to just do our job, get them in and out the door, or if we're running behind, we have another client coming, we tend to rush that process. However, We have to realize that clients do come to us 50% of the time based on us and not really the service that we're doing. We all know how important customer service is, but we don't realize that building the relationship or getting to know the client is part of this customer service experience. Just because you're being nice or you're on time and you're doing everything that you should be doing in order to provide good customer service, it does not mean you're building your relationship with your client. Now, you don't have to be nosy and try to get all the details of their lives, but you do want to take some time to ask them general questions like, how was your day? What are you looking for today? You want to ask your clients open-ended questions to give them the opportunity to talk back to you. From my experience of running a beauty salon, I have noticed a dramatic difference between clients tell of the individuals who did take the time to build relationships with their clients versus the ones that were mainly just quiet providing the service. Most people love talking about themselves. Even if they may not think they like talking about themselves, they really do. So if you do ask questions to get to know them and for them to get the opportunity to talk about themselves, especially something that they may be proud of to talk to you about they're definitely gonna feel like they love you and they want to come back to you so make sure that during these sessions as you're providing your service you're making it more about your client and letting them talk about their day and what's going on in their lives compared to you venting or you talking about your day and why you're so amazing. This is something that I have learned a long time ago and it was in regards to networking. However, I have been applying it with my clients all the time without even trying. And one day a client came to me and she said, I tried somebody else and I love their work. Maybe I hate to admit a little bit more than what you do, but I just love you, right? And that really hit me. Even if I'm not the greatest top number one service provider, if I can complement that with my service to them as far as customer service or my relationship building or my friendship, I want to call it even, then I'm going to keep that client even if somebody's out there that does a better job than I do. Another mistake that you may be making is not having information easily accessible. If it's your prices, your services, your online booking system, nowadays you do have to have an easy online booking system. Nobody wants to call or text and wait for your response. Make sure you are getting your information out easily without a lot of effort. So your customers, your clients or new clients can find you and book you. To supplement that, if you are booking clients, but you tend to sometimes run behind on schedule, reschedule on clients, tell them is it okay for them to come in another day or have them wait more than 5-10 minutes, they're not going to come back to you in the long run. So make sure not only you're having them get booked easily, but you're also on top of your schedule and you're not scheduling, rescheduling, making clients wait because Again, that's customer service. Half the time people come to you 
because you provide them good customer service. And your clients might have patience with you one time, two times, but definitely if somebody that does these type of things like rescheduling or pushing clients or asking them to come in earlier or later, then that becomes a habit and you're going to be constantly doing that, then you're going to lose your clients or you're not going to really build new clients because of this. The third mistake that you may be making is not following up with your current customers. A lot of our business, I would want to say on average, for me at least, over 80% of my business was my continuous or continuing customers. The ones that would keep coming back week after week for touch-ups, fills, and all of the repetitive services that I had to offer. Now, if I'm not following up with my current customers and I'm not keeping them happy, already I'm going to be declining my customer base, that 80% of the people that come to me regularly, where the 20% of my customers might be new customers, but I'm not going to retain my old customers and I have to try harder and find new people and new places to spread the word of my services to get the new customers. So don't forget about keeping your current customers happy versus trying to get new customers. It is very, very, very important to follow up with them. Even if they seem happy when they leave the door, just take two minutes and out of courtesy the following day or the following week, send them a quick text or an email or a phone call, depending on what your relationship is with them and ask them, Hey, how is your hair doing, your eyelashes doing, or how are you doing based on the discussion we had? Just wanted to check in on you. Do you need anything else from me? Right? So this is what's going to really help set you apart for you to take that extra five, 10 minutes and follow up. Even if you feel like you don't have time, you're fully booked. To be honest, we all have that five extra minutes in order to build our clientele. And if you're that busy and you're that booked that you cannot do that, you better have enough money to hire an assistant to be able to help grow your business and do these little things for you. The fourth mistake that you may be making with your clients is not being upfront with them because you don't want to disappoint them or lose them from the start. So if there is a service that you want to provide, but they're not the right fit for it, but they really want this service, you want to be upfront and realistic with them compared to trying your hardest to please them and give them what they want. So sometimes it's better to say, no, and then give them another option, an alternative that would work better for them compared to telling them yes, 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 and then them not getting the results that they wanted. So the concept is under promising and over delivering to keep your customers happy. Next, we're going to list the things that you can do to build a new clientele and retain them. First, you want to give them an offer that they cannot refuse. You want to give them a 50% and 80% off a service even. Even if you're not making any money off of that service, you want the customer to come into your doors and try your service. Because if you do a great job and you are a good fit for them as a service provider, then you're going to be able to gain that customer as a regular. And that's when you really make the money is in the long run. Because the hardest thing is for somebody to at least know about you when you're new. For example, for eyelash clients, you know when they get a full set, they also need to come in for a fill in two weeks. So you can give them an offer free fill with the full set. You know your audience, so you know what they're going to want to get, and that's how you determine what's the offer you're going to give them that they cannot refuse. The second thing you want to do to make sure you build clientele is be aware of your online presence and what you look like for somebody that doesn't know you. So if somebody were to go online and search your business, what information comes up? Are your reviews where you want them to be? Do you even have any reviews online? If not, you want to make sure you get on your current customers and have them write positive reviews. You don't want to have zero reviews because that shows somebody that you're very new or they're not sure and they're definitely going to check your competitors and go to the competitor that has the better reviews because they don't know anything else about you at first. 
The third thing you want to do is have a referral program with your current customers. You want to encourage them to tell their friends about you, to spread the word, and definitely give them some sort of a physical item or a digital QR code to spread your business information. So this could be a business card or if you want to go electronic, you give them a QR code that they can just quickly text their friends and their friends could get your website information, your booking information and all of that. Like I said earlier, the easier and more accessible your information is, the more likely people are going to check you out and book with you. The last thing you can do is network with your local businesses. This is one that I actually have been really wanting to do always and I haven't even done it. So I will definitely try to practice what I preach with this one. The way you would network with your local businesses is you want to partner with businesses that could refer business to you and you can refer business to them. So if you are let's say a eyelash studio and you see next door there's a hair studio that they do not do any eyelash services you guys can definitely combine customers and refer customers back and forth so you can say okay I'll give you my customers and refer to them for hair and you refer your hair customers to me for lash services and a lot of people if you are in a small studio where you're the only service provider or you do your own thing separately you can find people to network with even online on social media they don't have to be your physical neighbor but you do want somebody in close proximity if they are physically coming to you for a service most likely those customers are not going to be willing to drive that far to get the service you provide most people stay local for these services now once you have done all of this you have avoided the mistakes you can make and you have also done all the steps to be able to grow new clientele and retain your old clients the next step for you is to be able to start paid marketing. You want to invest at least 10% of your revenue into paid ads. So it could be Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, a marketer that you know will help you set these up. You can give your budget to them and they can figure all that out. A third party marketing company, physically hiring a marketer that is knowledgeable and educated in marketing definitely definitely that should be your next step 10 percent of your revenue going to your marketing cost well that's all i have for today in regards to building clientele please feel free to ask any questions or if you have anything else that you would recommend for our community of entrepreneurs have a great day and we will talk to you soon Thank you for listening. Please rate and review this podcast. Follow and engage with us on social media under the Yegi Project. And if you're interested in being a guest, email info at theyegiproject.com. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes.